welcome to another episode of Monster Monday from the Ready to Die channel. This series explores the design of a creature I have built for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. The stat block for this creature can be found over on the Monster Monday blog, as well as the Twitter and Discord, all of which are linked below. Gameplay clips in this video are provided by Nightmare Tree. Many thanks for the help! Back to handling some requests and suggestions, this week's build covers the Glyphid Grunt, the common enemy of Deep Rock Galactic. Bug-like aliens that infest Hoxus 4, grunts are the most basic enemies in the game, who are prone to attacking in large groups. I wanted to do something a little different this time around, and given how simplistic these creatures are, they burrow, they bite, and that's about it. I took the opportunity to build this creature as a troop. Individually, the glyphid grunts are probably about small size, making them too big for a swarm, and I've never tried building a troop before. Given that these are basic enemies and this is a gathering of them, I kept the level low, settling on level 3 for this creature. They obviously have the troop trait, as well as the animal and glyphid trait, in case I want to someday make more of them. In at least the first couple blocks here, there isn't anything too crazy going on, it's sort of business as usual. Small but mighty, the glyphids use a moderate strength and constitution, while only equipped with a dexterity between low and moderate. As simple animals, their mental stats leave a little something to be desired but their sheer array of senses grant them a moderate perception. Notably, glyphids lack eyes, leaving them with no vision. They instead navigate through suspected echolocation, scent, and given that they travel and burrow through the earth, tremor sense. For their skills, the glyphids use a high stealth since they like erupting from the earth unexpectedly, and a moderate athletics. As we move on to discussing the defenses of the glyphid, the first thing that we have to look at are the troop defenses. This is a standard ability applied to all troops, and it protects them against some single target effects, while also requiring their health to be divisible by 3, because this determines where they divide up, where they shrink. This is part of the reason why I lean towards a high set of hit points for this creature. Using a moderate would have been a more awkward number to divide by 3. Using the 60 puts our remaining thresholds at 40 and 20 hit points, meaning when reduced to these values, the glyphid group troop shrinks in size. To compensate for this high health, it uses a moderate armor class, as well as moderate saving throws for both fortitude and reflex, and then a naturally low save for will, since, as mentioned, they are simple animals. Lacking any eyesight, they are immune to visual effects, and then have the typical troop weaknesses to area and splash damage, which proved to be their undoing in the monster mash. Designing their attack was interesting, because troops don't attack normally. They, much like swarms, target areas all around them, and force saves on the party. The glyphid's jaws and claws force a reflex save at a moderate DC, given the unlimited use and range of this ability, as well as just my look at other troops, and then deal damage depending on how many actions the troops spent on it. At a single action, they deal less than low damage, low damage then on a 2 action usage, and then approximately high damage on a 3 action use. This damage is evenly split between piercing and slashing damage to represent their fangs and slashing limbs. Given the environments that the glyphids are found in, it felt appropriate for them to have the Rock Tunneler feature, based on the ability of the same name as the Cave Worm. But, even with that and its jaws and claws, the Glyphid Grunt troop felt a little lacking. Their design seemed very bare bones, as though they could be remade as any creature with a little bit too much ease. I wanted them to have something of their own. So, to help further differentiate them and make them a little bit more unique, I designed another ability for them called From Beneath. As a single action ability, this functions similar to a spell shape slash metamagic effect by modifying the next action the glyphids take. Provided, of course, that that action is Jaws and Claws. Flavor-wise, this is meant to represent the glyphids attacking even as they dig their way out from the earth. As such, its mechanical effects allow them to occupy the spaces of other creatures, and create difficult terrain in that area. But, its effects only really come online if a creature ends their turn in their space, dealing low damage at a high DC. Landing this can be a little difficult, but there is some benefit in simply forcing the enemy to move. One thing I like about it, even taking in some of its flaws, is that this ability encourages tactics other than simply swinging out. A swarm might start a fight with this, spend a round laying out some attacks, and then retreat back underground beneath the earth once more to try to trap victims in this area again. Folks, this was a short one, but that about covers it for the Glyphid Grunt Troop. These brutal bugs burst from below to butcher and bully boisterous bruisers. 
At level 3, these could serve as a fun early level boss encounter, probably best used after already facing a couple of solo glyphic grunts, which I don't think really need their own stat block. They could instead be represented with the modified stat blocks of a hunting spider or giant fly, while also maybe making use of the weak template. I did deliberately give these creatures a glyphid trait, in case I ever want to return to build more of them, since this was kind of fun, I had a good time with this. Let me know what you think of these little dudes, and what other monsters, or variants of glyphids, you might like to see in the comments below. You can check out the Monster Monday blog and Twitter for the stat blocks, or hop on the Discord to join the monster making and general tabletop discussions. These posts also include a Pathfinder 1st Edition version of the monster, along with a D&D 5e conversion. Thanks for watching, and have a monstrous Monday. Rock and Stone!